Why hello, Blair here from Chaos Costumes and let's learn some more Nomad. Today we're gonna make something a little bit more practical and maybe you can take it with you. To Renaissance fairs, just have it on your desk for funsies, hold your pens, I don't know. Let's go. So last week we made this chest and we struggle bust our way through it. This week we're gonna make something a lot more fun. We're gonna select new and we get a sphere, but we don't need that sphere. However, let's name this project. It will be a mug. Let's delete the sphere that we don't need and make a new primitive, which is a cylinder. It's mug shaped. So we wanna resize it. So every time it makes a new primitive, it's one millimeter. So let's make this 90 millimeters. Now it's all big. You can select the home button next to the cube to kind of zoom out. And then I want this a little longer, so we'll make it 1.5 units bigger by clicking the green node. Now we're cloning the shape, and I want to make it a little bit smaller so we can Boolean out that shape. So let's make it, let's say, 0.9. Now I'm going to drag it by that green circle just to make a perfect walls and bottoms for it. We're going to disappear that one and select the other cylinder and Boolean it out. And now you have a vessel for your things. Now we're going to add a new primitive, which is a box. This box will be the wood paneling. So we want to go ahead and make it 90 millimeters and then 1.5 units bigger. And now it's the exact same size. Now we'll select the tube option and it will open up this node menu or this node selection, a way to resize it. And we'll make it smaller and shorter with that. And then we'll go in with the gizmo to make it narrower. I don't like how fat that is, so we're going to go in with the nodes and drag it around that way. So it's just inside the cylinder. So the really cool thing is that you can add a radial repeater. And what the repeaters do is that it copies a shape, but all you have to do is sculpt one. So we're going to increase the amount until you get perfect little striations that we want. So let's go with that amount. And then I'll take this and widen it and narrow it as I please, just so those little gaps are just the way I want them. We're going to increase the topology so we can sculpt right on top of that. I increase it about till it gets to the orange, and the orange is like warning you how big of a file it's going to be. And once we do that, we can validate it. Call it pretty. Now we're going to do the fun part, which is sculpting. So I'm going to start with the clay tool, real small, and start building out that wood texture that we want. Make sure your front facing vertex only is selected, just so you're not sculpting behind it and creating voids. You can pretty much do whatever since this is an organic style. I'm just building up wood texture essentially. Follow your heart. Or you can follow me exactly. Now I'm gonna go in with the crease tool and kind of drive in that texture a little more. I didn't really like the way it was sculpting with the symmetry. So I turned the symmetry off so I can build it out that way. Now that we hammered in some creases, let's refine that texture with the clay tool. So now I'm just building out the shapes, more refined. Make sure you have what you want to sculpt selected, because each one of these radial shapes, it's its own shape. Now I'm just playing with it, make it just right. But if you notice, each stroke that I make is around the whole shape. If you really want to make it realistic, you can pull up a reference of wood or bark or whatever you want, but this is just for fun. So I want to do it this way, but I think I'm pretty happy with it. You can make the crease tool really tiny and just kind of carve in some more wood texture if you really want to. That's what I'm doing here, just swiping it real fast and long and tiny. You can turn on the stroke smoothing or turn it down so that that little lazy rope that's showing up isn't as prominent. 
No, I'm truly happy with it. So now that I'm happy with the cylinder, let's make these cute little bands. So what I did here is clone the original cylinder and just dragging it around, making it bigger, smaller, just so it's touching right on the edges there. Now I'm centering it where I want it to be. And we're gonna cut out the middle with the trim tool. So we'll do trim and make sure it's locked with that cube that I told you about last time. And just trimming it around, seeing where I want it to be. Trim the edges off. I turned off the auto validate so I can move this around with the little green dot to find just where the center is, where I want it to go. I decided that it's a lot easier if I just make one that's perfect and just the way I want it, cloning it with the gizmo and pulling it down. That's much easier. Now I have little bands to hold our barrel together. So now what I want to add is little rivets. So we'll add a sphere, but it's a primitive sphere. We'll drag it out here and resize it the way we want it. Pull it down, get it just right. Make sure it's not inside the mug. Resize it the way you want it. So just like we did with the snowman, we're gonna make this faceted by reducing the post subdivision. Now they look like little hammered rivets. Now we're gonna add a radial repeater to that again and increase the amount to where you want it. So that's a fast and easy way to make a shape repeat itself in a circle. Now we're gonna combine the radial repeater by hitting join. Now we're gonna make these rivets happen again by copying that one sphere under the repeater and dragging it up. Making sure it's centered by hitting the little cube. Now let's add a handle with a tube. I'm gonna drag it out. Oh, it's in the repeater. That's not what I want. So let's drag that up here out of the repeater. Bigify that. Unlongify it. So you see here, it's snapping. It's snapping to the nearest shape, and I don't want that. So you're gonna toggle off snapping. If you're ever frustrated with a tube tool, that's likely the culprit. So now I'm gonna drag this around, find the perfect little handle. Each time you click the length of the tube, it adds a node. And right now I have B-spline toggled. It just smooths out your shape a little more. So right now this handle looks too thick and we need it a little less thick. So what we're gonna select is the radius one time and that makes the tube taper. What it does is it gives you more nodes to control. So the top node is unaffected, but the bottom node you can move around and vice versa. It's the orange nodes you want to use to change the radius. Now I can just push this and pull this around and make sure it's touching the mug. What you can also do is change the radius to every node that you have. So you can fatify it in different areas or thicken it. Now that this handle is ergonomic, let's make this look like an antler. I'm gonna increase the division so I can sculpt on top of it right away. And validate it. We can go in with a smooth tool to smooth out this edge first. Same with this bottom little area. It just shrinks in those corners. So right now I'm just combining these little bands and I'm noticing the geometry is a little sparkly right there. We're going to voxel remesh them, but keep sharp edges. And there we go. Now it's not sparkly anymore. Let's move on back to the antler now that I've addressed that issue. What I'm going to do is go in with the brush tool and kind of carve out the middle here. And then smooth that back out. So there's kind of a divot in there, like real antlers do. I'm going to toggle the subtract off and start building out these little nubs on the outside of an antler. I'm just building it out as organically as I can. 
I want to subtract this area a little bit more and make it more concave. So that's what I did there. And smooth that back out. I want to add a little spline right there. So I'm going to select the drag tool and just kind of drag out that little spike there. I'm going to voxel remesh this to get rid of that little crease up there. And now I can smooth out that crease. When you make a tube and it has a harsh angle like that, the geometry is kind of tucked inside of itself. And that's what I did to fix that. I'm just moving stuff around until I'm happy. Now I want to add little striations around the body of the antler. So what I'm going to go in with is the clay tool, real small, and just kind of sketch on top of that antler. Very similar to the way that we made the wood. I'm going to hammer in some more texture with that crease tool. And I'm not quite happy with how sharp that is, so let's try the brush tool. I like that a lot better. Just carefully going along the length of it. The best way to build textures is to build in different textures with different layers. So first I went in with the clay layer, and then I'm going with the brush layer. Now I want to see underneath here better, so I'll solo it to the menu down at the bottom here. Now I'm going to go in with the smooth tool to create better transitions. Now I'll go in with the move tool just to refine the shape that I bumped out a little bit. To add more variety to these little nodes here so I'm just going to go in with the brush tool and just add some more. And then smoothing out all these transitions here. I'm not happy with this area so what I'm going to do is use the nudge tool to push things around. What the nudge tool does is just push things around the surface. It's a little different from the move tool. Think of the nudge tool as like the smudge tool in drawing. Now let's look at everything. I'm pretty happy with that, but I want the antler to look more antlery. So let's add a tube, another tube, a tube to the side. So let's draw that here and push it around to where we want it and thickify it as we please. Make sure you have the view toggled so you don't accidentally keep drawing tubes. And we'll do that thing where we change the radius on just one side by clicking the radius had to have two control points. Now I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm going to increase the division so it's not really lumpy and angular and validate it. And before you voxel remesh everything together, just smooth out that tip to make it round. Now I'm going to push and pull this around a little bit so it has a better transition before I glue these shapes together. So I'm going to go in with the select tool down here. Then I can glue them together with voxel remeshing so I can smooth out this transition better. I'm looking at it and it looks like the antler's just kind of floating there. So let's make little quote unquote nails that go through it. So I'm going to take one of the spheres that I made and pull it out here so it makes more sense. And then push it and pull it around so it goes through the antler. It kind of looks like it's going through the antler. And same with this guy. So we're going to push it and pull it around to make it look like it's nailed through. I mean, to be fair, there's no rivets on the inside, but you get the gist. We want it to be smooth, easy for cleaning on the inside. Aesthetic on the outside. Now it makes sense. Now that I'm pleased with it, let's glue it all together. But first let's glue the radial symmetry together alone and then glue everything together. 
Now we will name our layer mug. <laughs> and then it's a little too high in the vertice department, so let's decimate it before we send it to save. It's still pretty up there, so let's keep decimating it until we get it low enough. We have to keep decimating it. Decimate sounds so destructive, but it's not. I'm just making sure that the geometry still looks pretty if I decimate it. But that seems good. Nice and low poly for printing. So let's save this and then export it. I like to export the selected. To my fancy handy dandy 3D folder. Let's fill the stuff. There's so much stuff in there. And since we decimated it, it saves nice and quick. All right, now we're going in with a new project and let's print this bad boy. So you wanna make sure global's toggled and that we have it selected on random seam position. And we wanna make sure the support is toggled. And you want tree supports. Those are really the easiest to remove. So let's import the STL that we made. And now it's the exact size that it comes up. You don't have to scale it up with the pop-up. We started out with 90 millimeters, which is just under 10 centimeters. So I'm looking at the support. These upside down triangles, as I call them, these little guys, they're gonna cause failures. So you wanna make sure to paint in support material that builds up around them. Otherwise, they're very likely to fail. So that's what I'm doing here. Same with that little guy. We wanna make sure he succeeds. Now I'm looking at it and it looks like it's gonna build support material underneath the mug and we don't want that. So we're gonna move it down just a smidge so that it builds completely on the build plate and not building support material underneath it. So now that we look, it's like bright red, but it's not that dark red. Keep in mind if you're using bamboo slicer, the colors are gonna be a little different. I'm using Orca slicer here. So let's slice this bad boy and print it. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? We learned the repeater, basic sculpting, get a better feel for Nomad and how you can create your own things. I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I'll see you next week.